okay, how does this happen in modern gaming? This guy had no hype, no test realm, no patch notes, no preview, and the only teaser we got was nine months ago. Imagine if Huey or Melio just appeared out of nowhere one day. Does Valve have no marketing team? Where is the janitor? I can't. I just can't. With the release of Ringmaster, it's now more obvious than ever before that Dota's devs have been closely inspired by champion designs in League of Legends. I'm talking about percent HP damage, sweet spots, skill shot galore, recasts, and more. Write that down, write that down! Alone, these ideas are just cool, but together they really paint a picture. Today, we will talk about three heroes and how their designs were directly influenced by League of Legends. Starting with... Dress rehearsal is over, now it's showtime! Anyone else feel like Ringmaster's skit is sort of weird in Dota? There's damage numbers way higher than the average, but crowd control is way shorter than expected. That's because these are league numbers. League of Legends has a balance that is notorious for having very high damage on nukes and much shorter, more inconsistent crowd control elements. The average CC duration in Dota is 2 seconds for stuns and 4 for slows. In League, stun durations are shorter, leading closer to 1 second than 2, and slows last around 3. Now, let's look at the fear and slow on Ringmaster. Hold up! Wait a minute! Secondly, let's take a look at the ult. It has an initial effect and DPS, and then an effect at the end. This design of initial and ending effects is extremely rare in Dota, but pretty common in League. Middle 6 does DPS and a nuke at the end. Morgana does damage at the start and only stuns at the end. There's Warwick, Huey, Diana, and more. In League, this is not a rare mechanic. Next, it's the percent HP damage linear skill shot. There's been percent HP damage before, but it's usually pretty hard to land. Phoenix has to channel and costs HP. Lifestealer has to attack in melee range. But just take a look at all of the abilities in League that scale with enemy HP. Keep in mind, most of these are skill shots. Finally, Ringmaster marks the return of the sweet spot mechanic. First added in by Dawnbreaker, it's a reference to abilities that do something extra in a specific spot in the ability's AoE. Ringmaster can aim a charge to hit in the smaller AoE at the center of the cast for more damage and longer fear. Sweet spot mechanics are a league favorite, seen in places like Haymaker, the Darkened Blade, and Decimate, among others. Still not convinced? Let's take a look at Darkness fears the break of dawn. <laughs> Let fire light the sky. If she were added to League, the community would quickly dub her a 200 year champion. For the Dota players out there, this refers to a hero whose kit has far too many mechanics. Dawnbreaker's ult, Solar Guardian, is a global teleport with a channel time, AoE healing, AoE damage per second, AoE stun, and can be buffed with evasion and movement speed. Her Celestial Hammer has damage in the cast, on recast or expiration, AoE slow, AoE damage per second, vision, and a dash. Just between these two abilities, there's at least 11 different mechanics. The average Dota ability has only two or three mechanics, so this is clearly a deviation from the norm. Meanwhile, in League's recent character design, abilities are described with paragraphs. Next, we've already talked about the intro of Sweet Spot mechanics to Dota, seen in Starbreaker. But even more than that, Dawnbreaker introduced the secondary cast as well. In Dota, abilities have just one cast. And when there's a recast, it's to end the ability early. 
Celestial Hammer Recast is a dash, which is more than just ending the spell. Uniquely, the dash will only happen with the recast. And not when the spell expires. As you might expect, spells with secondary casts are pretty popular in League, and champions like Akali, Lee Sin, and Zed even have multiple abilities with recast properties. The final here I wanted to show off is... Who said you could stroll in my woods? Okay, hear me out. Both Hoodwink and Jin have really crappy attack speed, offset with having a movement speed buff. They each have a bouncing ability that scales with attack damage, and a conditional crowd control. Their ultimates are almost identical, locking them in place for skill shots that slow and damage the first hero hit. The only major difference there is that Jin gets 4 shots, while Hoodwink only gets 1. In all of Dota's and League's history, though League has copied plenty of Dota, Goodwink remains as the best example so far of Dota copying League. It's just funny to me to see how Hoodwink has become a support, considering her origin as a League carry. It's cool that Dota's taking what works from League when designing new heroes, but secretly I'm scared that Dota will lose its identity. Not long ago, Dota added innate passives for every single hero, like League has had from the start, and added a secondary boss to complement the primary one. But, each addition so far has been spectacular. If Dota needs to look a little more League-like to grow and evolve, then let's do it. I just wish League would take the same approach and copy more of what makes Dota so great. Thank you for watching my video. I was working on another one when Ringmaster got added and I had to pivot fast. Don't worry, the Rules for Dota video is still underway. I hope you liked this video more than the last one and less than my next. See ya!